Can I get infinite power using this car alternator? Because hundreds of videos online say that I can. But is that actually true? No, it's not. But is it? It's not. My previous infinite power video got bombarded with a lot of comments calling me a liar and also that some sort of big company paid me to say those lies. That could mean only two things. One, people are uneducated. And two, people are uneducated. Come on guys, you can get energy out of nothing. Anyway, today we make some tests. I've just bought this new car alternator. Actually, it's not new, it's second hand, but it's new to me. In my previous video, I took apart one of these car alternator to pass it from a brushed one to one that is using permanent magnets. And that pass from a brushed one to permanent magnets was just to prove that the free energy is a lie. And there was a video that was claiming that they were generating 3000 watts with such a car alternator. First of all, 3000 watts is a lot of power. It's enough to supply my entire home, so it's not a joke. But let's say that in a perfect world, we could generate 3000 watts using this. How could you actually measure that? Because it's not that easy. I know that is voltage times current. But it's not that easy to measure without using special equipment, especially when we are working with hundreds of amps. How can we do that? Also, the output of such a generator is triple phase, as you can see. And for that, I made a small PCB, but quite powerful. So guys, let's see how much power we could measure out of this car alternator. And who knows, maybe 100 watts, 200 or 500 watts, 1000, who knows? So let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. This is the main output of the car alternator. So let's connect the multimeter to it and give it a spin and see how that goes. And speaking about my PCB, I'm sharing the files for free below in the description. So go and download the Gerber files and also the schematic and the part list and assemble it. And I'll be using this PCB in my next video where I'll be assembling this rectifier together with the hover motors because I'm starting the wind turbine project. Because now that I'm living in a house, I can test it and start creating power with that. So yeah, just download the Gerber files and then go to the PCB way and use their services for prototyping for only $5. You can get amazing PCBs, very good quality, nice tracks, the color that you want, and you can finish your prototype or your project in just a couple of days. For more, check PCB way for all the services. The negative output of an alternator is all the metal parts because that is the ground of the car. So here, 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 anywhere we can connect the probe. And positive is connected to this output. In this case, this has two outputs. But this is the main one and this is maybe connected to some sort of other electronics. So let's just give it a spin and see how it goes. We have the multimeter in voltage mode. I use my drill to do that. Kind of generating 0.4 volts. But as you can see, almost nothing happens. Yes, we are generating 0.4 volts. I'm not sure why is that. But as you can see, it has no voltage output. This will generate like almost 20 volts, 18 volts or so. So why is that? Well, that's because inside we have something like this. And this is a brushed electromagnet. So in order to generate a magnetic field, we first have to connect power to the brushes. Yeah, it sounds kind of stupid that you have to connect power in order to generate power, but that's how the car alternator works. We connect power to generate a magnetic field. That magnetic field induces a current into the coils and generates a lot more power at the output. So that's why we don't have power. We have to connect first power to the brushes and then spin it. Those brushes internally are connected to these two pins. So let me just power up my power supply and connect 12 volts. Here is the positive side of the brushes and the negative side. So now when I power out the power supply, you will see that it will draw a lot of current like 3.5 amps. But then when I rotate it, it will generate a voltage at the output. So let's just do that. So I'll start the power supply. 2.8 amps and now when I rotate, just look at the multimeter. As you can see we have reached 19 volts. So now we are generating power. So now you know that we have to first connect power to these pins in order to generate more power. But you have also seen that we have a 3 point something amps of waste. It's just current that is flowing through the coil and that is being lost. So in order to lower the losses, we also have a regulating circuit here. As you can see, we have this clip 
and that connects the power to this regulating uh, circuit. Because inside of a car, what you need is a steady voltage. So what you have to do is to increase the power into the coil and decrease it in order to keep like 12 volts for the battery, because the battery is like 12 to 14 volts. So we have that. So let me just show another example, connecting and disconnecting that circuit, and you will see that we will drop the current even if we are generating still the same amount of uh, voltage. Pay attention to the current consumption of my power supply, which is the wasted power, and also the generated voltage. Now the connection of the circuit is not connected, so now we will waste like 3 amps just for keeping the coil energized. So let's just do that. 3.2 amps of last power. As you have seen, we are generating 18 volts and we are still losing 3.2 amps of power. But now I connect that connection. And you will see that when I'm spinning the electromotor, you will see that it will start uh, regulating the voltage and only 0.7 amps will be wasted. Let's just do that. But the voltage will still be generated. You can also hear a difference in sound. As you have seen, we've dropped the amps to 0.7 and we are still generating voltage. There you have it. Okay, so by now we know how to use a car alternator to generate power. But we have to take a decision if to use it with the regulator circuit or not, because if you want to get the maximum power out of it, maybe it's more obvious to just leave it free, just connect 3 point something amps to the coil and just get the maximum power out of it. But maybe not, we have to test it. And now comes the interesting part of this video. How we could actually measure the maximum power that you could get out of this. Because it's not that easy. You see, we have to measure voltage and current. And first of all, this could generate up to, I think, 200 amps. It's rated at 200 amps. So my multimeter goes up to 10 amps. And if you go it above that, you could burn it. So we have to use maybe a clamp or other device to measure the current. And at the same time, you have to measure the voltage. But how can you measure the voltage without a load? Because the voltage is between two points. And if you add a load, that is not the maximum power because the maximum power is measured when you have a short circuit at the output. And if you short circuit the output and you connect the multimeter, you'll get zero volts because it's a short circuit. So as you can see, it's not that easy. You have to make maybe add a resistor, measure the voltage, measure the current at the same time, and then another resistor, make a graph. It's not that easy without special equipment. So let's see how to do it. If we short circuit the output, we can measure all the current that is generated but we can measure the voltage. And if we add a resistor, we can measure the voltage across the resistor, but we can measure the maximum power because it's limited by the load. So we have to make a lot of tests and maybe make a graph. But for that, we have to add a resistor at the output. So let's add a resistor like this one and see what happens. Okay, so here I have the resistor and the multimeter connected. Let's just power it on and see what happens. Right, we are generating a lot of power. Yeah, right, we need a bigger resistor. How about this one? Or maybe this one? Or maybe this one? Okay, so what kind of resistor we need for this job? How to select one? Where there is no special formula, all you have to know is that this is rated for 140 amps at 14 volts. That is 2000 watts. No. That should be the maximum output, but like in a car maybe. So maybe if we change it, we can get even more or maybe less. But anyway, 2000 watts is a lot of power for a very small resistor. This is rated for only 500 watts for long period of times, but we can use it for a lot more power for short period of times. And this has one ohm. This kind of resistor is on top of a ceramic, so it could dissipate the heat quite well. And this is used with wind turbine when you want to slow it down. When the wind is too hard and instead of breaking the wind turbine, you want to slow it down, you connect this load and you can break it like electronically. So we'll use this uh, resistor just to make some tests and show something. Okay, so we have the load in series with our generator and the multimeter connected on the terminals. So now we are measuring the voltage that is dropping on top of this one ohm resistor. I start on the power from the supply and start generating. we have reached 12 volts. How can we use that to measure the power that was dissipated? Actually, now the resistor is a bit hot, but anyway, there is a way to measure the power not using the current. 
because the power is equal to voltage times current, but is also equal to voltage times squared divided by the used resistor, but it has to be the voltage that is wrapping on top of that measured resistor, not on top of the entire circuit. So we know that on top of this one ohm resistor we had a 12 volts voltage drop. So it's easy, 12 volts squared equals to 144 divided by one ohm, we have dissipated 144 watts, which is not much. We are expecting a lot more from this beast, I mean it could reach maybe 2000 watts. So how can we get more? Well, it sounds easy, but it's not that easy. Because we could use a lower value resistor instead of one ohm, just going lower and lower, the power output will be bigger and bigger. Well, the maximum power would be with zero resistance, meaning a short circuit. But once again, if you have a short circuit, you can measure a voltage drop, so you can actually use that formula. So we are in a pickle because if you want to get to the maximum value, you have to get to a short circuit. And once again, you can measure that and you see, it's like a paradox. But anyway, how could you get lower value resistors? Well, you could buy a lot of these ones, which cost a lot, or you could buy one like this, which is kind of the same, is rated for 100 watts and is of 50 ohms, but as you can see, it has this knob that could move around. So just by placing the knob right here, it will be like 1 ohm up to 50 ohms. The problem with this is that it only goes down to 1 point something ohms, which once again is too high because we have already used this, which is 1 ohm and it's not enough. And I want to get to lower values, maybe 0 0.1 ohms or 0 0.05 ohms. With those, we have a voltage drop, which will be very low, but we can measure a lot of current. So how could we do that? Well, the solution is also quite easy, but it has its problem as well. Instead of buying a lot of these resistors with different values and make a graph, which will cost a lot because I think this costs like $30, imagine buying five or six of these, you spend a lot of money, we could use a different approach, making our own resistors. Making a resistor is very, very easy because any wire could be a resistor. It has its own resistance, you can measure it and use it in your circuit. The problem with a copper wire is that the resistance is quite low, so you need a lot of it, and also it can withstand to high temperatures, so it might melt. So we could use, for example, nichrome wire. And this is usually used with heaters, so we could use it and heat it a lot more and withstand that heat till we can make the measurement. But that could also result in something different, different problems. In a different video, I've tried to make such a resistor and also water cool it, as you can see here. It didn't go that well, the pump leaks and it's an it's a mess and also the resistance is of 0 0.5 ohms, which is not low enough. So I just thought just cut some wire, place it in uh, different loops and this has 0 0.07 ohms, which is quite low. It's almost like a short circuit. So let's just test it and see what problems this could give. Okay, I have my load in series with the output and also the multimeter. So let's just measure once again the voltage drop on the 0 0.07 ohms resistor or on the supply. one point four volts so let's just make the calculations so by using the formula before voltage squared divided by the resistance in this case one point four multiplied one point four is one point ninety six divided by zero point zero seven is twenty eight in the previous test we have wasted like one hundred and forty watts and now just twenty eight watts with a very low resistance how is that well the problem is that this wire also changed its resistance with the heat so look what happens when I keep it for a few seconds. The wire will get very hot and that affects the measurements. So once again, we get into a paradox because the more you use it to make tests, the more it will hit. The resistance is not constant, so the output is not constant. So the voltage that you measure is not constant. So you can trust the results. Let's check the temperature of the wire. Right now it's at 27 degrees. Let's just use it for some time. As you can see, it's smoking, it got very hot. 80, 90, one, 100, see, I've seen 100 degrees. 92, so it's very, very hot. So as you can see, just by changing the temperature, the resistance, the resistance will also change. Let's just measure the resistance with the multimeter. Look, the resistance is already cooling down. I'm measuring without being connected to the alternator. And as you can see, it's not constant. It's cooling down and it's going up. It was 0 0.07, 0 
just a few moments ago and now it's 0.04 and going upwards so the hotter it gets the lower the resistance will be so the voltage that we are measuring we have to divide that not by 0.07 but maybe 0.01 or even less so the power will be a lot higher so i can know for sure how much power i'm dissipating so guys there you have it it's not that easy to calculate the maximum power of such a device maybe using an electronic load if you remember i've made an electronic load on this channel and also maybe one of 50 watts or 100 watts already cost like 50 dollars so imagine having an electronic load up to two or three thousand watts that will be very expensive basically it's just some mosfets that are getting their internal resistance controlled so you can get to very low values and also have a lot of heat dissipation using fans and coolers and heat dissipators of aluminum and with that you can measure a lot more precisely the power and also control the output but i don't have money for that so we can measure for sure the power output of this but at least you have learned how difficult it is to measure such a power out of this and also how difficult it will be if you were to measure from our homemade one with permanent magnets with triple phase output maybe measure the output of each phase imagine that it could complicate a lot hi guys i was just editing the video and i thought i should also show you some digital loads and the prices that you get for example this is of 200 watts and already costs 200 euros for only 40 amps 5 volts and this is a Chinese one from AliExpress, so maybe it's not that good. But anyway, I found a different one. This does go up to 1,500 watts. But as you can see, it's 2,500 euros and plus 50 for the shipping. So as you can see, the more load you want to measure, the a lot higher the price will be. So for our generator, maybe if we can get to 2,000 watts, we need an even bigger one. And I don't have money for that and I don't even need to measure that. But as you can see, without this high tech, it's almost impossible to measure the maximum power of that. So we had to rely on the label that, that it has 140 amps at the 20 volts or 14 volts, I think it was. So yeah, that's it. Also remember that I'm still planning to make my wind turbine using motors from a hoverboard and we weren't able to measure the maximum power of this one. We can measure one power, which is not the maximum, but we can measure the maximum because it's very difficult. And I think for this was like 300 watts, which is enough for me. And I've made this full bridge rectifier. That's why for now, for a future project, I've made a different PCB for a full bridge rectifier of 1,500 watts, which is more than enough for me for using two of these motors in one single wind turbine. Stay tuned for that project. And if you want this PCB, you can check the schematic and the PCB and the Gerbers in the description below or that at PCBWay and get yourself a full bridge rectifier of 1,500 1, watts. So guys, in my next video of this infinite power and free energy and also homemade wind generators, I'll make this PCB with a triple phase output uh, rectifier and test it out and also use this to see the power that I'm getting from my motors because this is a wind controller MPPT charger and it has directly a triple phase input. So I could connect the hover motors and also the car generator directly to this one and this has an input of 1500 watts so at least we could measure that if we can reach that so stay tuned for that in the next video i'll test this and also make the pcb and share it with you guys and tell you the results so guys i hope that you have learned something new at least the formulas and how to manage and measure the power of an, uh, a generator and see how difficult it is to reach the maximum point because it's kind of a paradox because you can measure the voltage and the current what you have seen in this video and i hope that you have learned something new if so consider subscribing or leave a comment below hit the like button and so on keep up you guys so guys here i am in my workshop another video that ended i hope that you like it and the most important part i hope that you have learned something new anyway i just wanted to give a thank you to all my patrons to you guys to the viewers who are supporting me liking my content uh, sharing it commenting below uh, just check my website check my shop check my t-shirts all this kind of stuff will support my channel, so thank you very much once again.